I've never heard of Pixio before, and you probably haven't either, but when they offered to sponsor this video for their new PX277 Pro, um, it's a 1440p display, 165 hertz or something, and it's got a KVM inside of it, and the price tag is actually reasonable. We just, you know, we couldn't resist. So we're gonna open it up and see if it lives up to their claims. We've got this sweet engineering sample, not for resale sticker. We get that for most of the things that we get here so that, you know, we don't just turn around and sell everything. Ugh. What else is on? Yeah, that's why we can't give away stuff. What else is on the box? So there's like nothing on this side. I don't know what David's looking at. Let's turn around. There's nothing on this side either. It's just box stuff. Like, hey, handle the box with care and... Where does it say 144? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's actually like kind of refreshing, but also a bit of a pain because I like to be able to just look at the box and be like, okay, it's got this, this, and this. Because you don't always want to like, you know, if you're going to Best Buy, you don't want to sit there and Google every single product. And I, I'm sorry, I don't trust <laughs> employees to like tell me anything about the stuff there. Not harping on Best Buy. That's like almost any electronic store. I just don't really trust them, I guess. So here's the base, here's the stand. And here's the cable. Warning, to avoid danger from suffocation, keep these bags away from babies and children. Oh, don't let John get a hold of it. Don't let John get a hold of it. <laughs> Thank you for choosing Pixio. Pixio is a gaming monitor and accessories brand that is focused on growing and becoming a reliable partner in the esports community. Although small, we work hard to deliver big. We invite you to take this step with us. Thank you for experiencing gaming at its best with Pixio. Wow. These guys assume that if you're buying this monitor, you know what you're getting already. You don't need reminders. And that's kind of true. Like most of the time when I buy a monitor and it's got all this extra manual and, um, and documentation saying like, oh, it's, this, it's, it's X, Y, and Z, or it's all over the box. It's like, yep, I know, thanks. I didn't need to know that or look at that or see it or whatever. The only reason I know anything about it is because they sent us a bunch of specs and we've like looked at the website and stuff and it's supposed to be pretty reasonable i think it's about 350 dollars or so and you get a 1440p 144 hertz display i think this is just a couple usb ports and um, some ethernet it's also got a usb-c display port attachment so what you can do is you can actually hook up a laptop to this really easily you don't even need a charger it'll charge up to i think 65 watts man the more i talk about this thing the more i like it actually Everyone's still talking up 4K and even 8K, but the reality is like, who can run that? Like I have a pretty nice computer with a 3070 and a 9900K and I can't run 4K. Like I can, but it's, you know, like maybe 60 FPS if I tone down settings and stuff, but I'm kind of a graphics snob. And so I like to have everything at least at like very high or high. I mean, ultra if possible, but we've done a whole video on why that's kind of dumb. But 1440p is manageable. Like I can get really high frame rates in most new games at 1440p. I'm playing God of War right now, boy! And while streaming on the same card, I can get like 100 frames per second or so on very high settings. So I'm pretty happy. Uh, okay, so one minor complaint already is it doesn't use that toolless system that a lot of other monitors use. It uses this three screw uh, system to screw into the base. They probably could have gone with a single screw just right in the middle, like most other monitors. I mean, this thing isn't huge. It's like 27 inches. So that's the KVM, I'm guessing. And then there's your power, uh, USB delivery, and HDMI 2.0, 144 hertz, DP 1.2, 160. You know, I really like that these are all labeled. Um, and not just labeled, like they don't just say HDMI or DisplayPort or whatever. They, it says HDMI 2.0, 144 hertz. It tells you what it is, it tells you what it can do. Even with the Type-C charging, it tells you it can do 65 watts. Uh, and it can do 165 because it's basically display port uh, and then a headphone jack so yeah points to them um it doesn't do a couple other things we noticed like it doesn't i'm pretty sure it doesn't go vertical no i want to try to bend it a bit more but i'm pretty sure it's just gonna break um so yeah you can't like tilt this vertically but you know what not many people even do that S especially not if you've only got like one monitor who uses a <laughs> single monitor vertically i do yeah <laughs> look at my stomp <laughs> yeah. One nice thing, just uses my favorite little feature, navigation nipple, and it looks like that's all you get for your menu controls, which is perfectly fine. It's pretty thin bezel too. Like you basically just get a bunch of screen space and a very small chin on the bottom. This is Pixio. It looks like they're taking the approach of, you know, what do gamers need? Give it to them. Don't put any bells and whistles or frills or anything like that. But that being said, 
Yeah, actually, never mind. There is more play than I expected. You need a good amount of swivel. You can tilt. There's two little slots on the back here. I think they're for speakers because they're on the exact same side. And I think they're just rear firing, which kind of sucks, but whatever, you don't usually want to use monitor speakers anyway. Uh, otherwise, it's gotta be for cooling because I don't know why else you'd put little vents in the back of your monitor. So let's just put it on our PC, set it up and take a look, see how it actually looks. Ooh, now, for the other monitor. So it's 1440p. Um, I'm gonna turn on HDR looks off, but I mean, this is what Windows looks like with HDR on. It's not good on monitors. It's just not. Like, mini LED, when we get there, I mean, they're gonna be expensive as hell when they launch, but man, does it look really nice. And they're gonna have proper HDR with like really good full array local dimming with like 500 plus zones, um, but that's gonna cost you an arm and a leg, like uh, over $1,000 for a 1080p or 1440p monitor. I mean, it basically looks like I expected it to. This thing has something like 130% coverage of uh, sRGB, um, like 97% DCI-P3 and 96% Adobe RGB, which is the majority of it. So it colors a pretty, <laughs> it colors, it covers a pretty wide color gamut, which is always a plus. As for accuracy, it's not tuned out of the factory or anything, but the fact that you have access to those colors mean that means that you can try to calibrate it yourself, especially if you have the proper equipment to do so. Uh, as for brightness, it gets up to like 450 nits. Let's blast a white screen. Yeah, it's pretty bright. Like 450 nits isn't that bright, but for a monitor, it's not bad. No way. Okay, so that's actually really cool. Apparently it's manufactured and goes directly to the consumer. So that kind of makes sense with the box we got. Um, it kind of makes sense with the price point they're able to hit. That's actually great. Honestly, I hate paying middlemen for like anything. Um, so I'm all aboard the direct from the factory straight to consumer train. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. And this is with HDR turned off. Like the colors actually look like they're supposed to. Those greens on those peppers actually look really good. And you don't get a bunch of like weird color bleed, like all of this black on the grill um, and like the grease splattering and stuff. It all looks great. Um, even just looking back at like these pots and stuff, you can see a lot of nice color differentiation between everything. The chicken looks good. I think this is beef or something or pork. That looks really good. Are you, have you had lunch yet? Are you hungry? No, I had a salad. That's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I mean, so far I actually like this thing. It takes out a little too much desk real estate. Um, like these monitor, the, the base legs, they probably could have gone a little bit wider so it doesn't have to cut this far into your desk, but that's okay. Like that's a pretty minor complaint. Um, otherwise like, it looks pretty good. The bezel is a little thicker than I was hoping for on the actual screen itself, but that's fine. They do have an inside bezel on the chin, which is a little unfortunate. It's, it's a pretty minor thing. You're gonna end up with the same kind of screen real estate overall. It's just when you have the chin, you can usually put the plastic up a little higher so that it hides that bezel completely so that like the screen looks like it just disappears into the bottom. Otherwise, everything looks really good so far. Even though this one here doesn't say G-Sync capable like our ASUS monitor does right there, uh, there's a good chance it's just a driver thing. Like this is pretty early. I think this comes out around March this year. So it probably just doesn't have its information up to date, but it can enable G-Sync. It's G-Sync compatible. You can enable it for full screen mode. It doesn't have the G-Sync module, but it's still pretty good. Hey, I've got nipples. Can you milk me? Don't tempt me. <laughs> I kind of wish that it was centered. I've said that a few times when checking out other monitors. But you know, it's not that bad. It's a little lower, which is nice. Like I can do it like this. Let's crank it to 100, maybe get even brighter. Contrast, black, sure, sure, sure. Uh, preset, user. Oh yeah, I forgot about the, okay. So movie probably looks the best, at least for content consumption anyway. You can change the aspect ratio. Four by three. Ooh, cool. That's so good. that's actually a pretty cool feature. If you like to play a lot of retro games, um, Check out the four by three option. Honestly, I never thought I'd say that, but you know, that's handy. Other ac other aspect ratios, not everyone can do that. Oh, you just change your input by like pressing up on the uh, nipple, which is nice. So that's the other cool thing is you don't have to go into a menu. If like, what happens if I go down? So down is the KVM stuff. So USB up and uh, type C, so that's cool. What's, uh, what's left? Left is your uh, color profiles. That's actually really handy. I really like what they've done here. Right is the crosshair stuff, if you want it, and an FPS counter, which is great. Oh, it's got timer too. That's actually pretty cool. I like that they've got a timer, because um, especially with Windows 11, 
games are on your main screen. It's really frustrating because you can't see the clock. RGB light on. So there is an RGB light. Where is this RGB light? There is a tiny little strip of my beloved RGB. And unlike another monitor uh, that we did, it's got like the whole diffusion across the whole strip instead of just like, oh, here's five little LEDs and it splashes light across the wall. No, give me the strip, let it diffuse. So it looks good when I look at it and I don't have to look at it like splashed against something. Obviously everything kind of looks like ass. Um, that's pretty much just because <laughs> the game itself <laughs> is probably setting, yeah, 1280 by 768. You Wait, your aspect ratio. oh, that's why. Why is it at 5.3? Oh my God, 16 by nine. Uh, RTX on. Yeah, what do we have in here? Like a 3090? Okay, it's all looks good. Apply. Oh, looks so much better. Everything is applied. Looks great. Looks like the Doom Eternal we know and love. And let's jump into wherever our save slot is on the campaign. It's not the first level, I don't think. But whoever saved this, <laughs> put me in. Linus. Put me in with no ammo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an elitist, but I have high standards. Yeah, you are. But I. <laughs> <laughs> Your keyboard stuff. There's some things. There's <laughs> everyone has a thing. Right, and keyboards are mine, and that's fine. But even with keyboards, I'm not an elitist. I just, I appreciate, you know, the nice stuff. Like, if, 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 I'm, if I've got a type, like, I don't like this keyboard, but I'll, you know, I don't care, I'll use it, and that's just fine. I don't wanna uh, use this full auto, how do I switch? There we go. So even though it doesn't have like the best HDR, most monitors don't, the whole, having like 450 nits brightness does kind of make everything pop just a little bit more, even in SDR. And I'm a big fan. If you can, if you can avoid buying a 300 nit monitor and get something even just four or 500 nits, definitely go for it. Especially if you can afford it. But like even just this scene here it looks great. Like the smoke down there and like the green lighting up there. The fire looks nice and like fiery. Man, Doom Eternal looks so good. I find it really blurry when it's in motion. There's a little bit of screen tearing, like when you move everything too much, but it's not too, too bad. And honestly, we're trying to give you like a worst case example in this situation. Most people, when they play games, don't do this. You know, they like pan around, maybe do a quick 180, but by the time you've turned, you don't even really like notice any of the in-between stuff that maybe looked a little bad. So that's totally fine, honestly. So we're gonna do some UFO tests real quick. At this 165, the UFO looks pretty good. It's pretty clear. There's not like a bunch of smearing or anything. Um, let's do some other tests. Let's do, where is the drop down? Video game panning test. So the top one's 30 FPS. The bottom's 165. And I play a lot of Dota, so this is all very familiar to me. As long as you're using this thing with a high frame rate in games that matches or exceeds your 165 hertz uh, refresh rate, it's gonna look pretty good. Like even in Dota, panning around the map this fast, um, these guys, you know, they get a little blurry sometimes, but it's not that bad. Let's see what else they've got. Frame pacing, slight stutter. Dota 2, oh, there's other, oh, this is cool. Quebec City. Yeah, so like when we look at this still image of Quebec, it does get a little blurrier because there's all these much finer details in here. So, you know, who watches someone racing around Quebec or a cityscape? Maybe don't watch movies on this thing. Um, use it just for games. It's definitely not gonna be your like, oh, this is my 4K 60 super uh, good HDR monitor that I play all my content on. This is gonna be just like, I'm gaming, maybe play some high frame rate esports like Counter-Strike or Dota or League of Legends, something like that. It'll look perfectly fine. You can see a bit of stutter and tear as it goes, but I guarantee you, if we put just about any monitor on here, you're gonna see a little bit. This is tough to do perfectly. Maybe an OLED could do this perfectly by turning every like every pixel just off to get these blacks exactly where they're supposed to be. But this is an extreme example. Um, in actual use case, it looks really good. So Pixio seems to be doing a pretty good job here. The PX277 Pro uh, is this guy here and it's gonna be less than $380. It's gonna be out in March and honestly, if you're looking for a new monitor, you want 1440p, you want a high refresh rate, it's not a bad buy. If you can find something cheaper, then sure, maybe go for that. But I don't think with all the features that this has, you're gonna find all that much uh, for much cheaper. If you do wanna pick one up, take a look at the link below. We'll have it available there for you. And if you wanna watch any other short circuits, take a look at the Corsair Xenion monitor that we unboxed. That thing has a worse stand than this. 
Uh, but it's still a nice monitor. It's a very f multifunctional monitor. <laughs> yeah, it's very multifunctional. Uh, thanks for watching.